If you told your family that you were going to go take a stroll in Midtown Harrisburg in the wee hours of the night and early morning, they would probably tell you to sit down and behave yourself. But what if you were doing it in Jesus' name? That's exactly what Pat Nissel does. At annual conference this year, Reverend Adam Hamilton spoke to us about how Jesus spent most of his time with people that were not of faith and were actually outcasts of society. He suggested that we as a church should seek people that are outside of the church walls and on the margins of society. Pat Nissel does just that. She has two ministries that reach out to low-income urban dwellers, a soup kitchen and a street mission. Thank you so much for coming, Pat. Thank you for having me. Uh, I know that your sleep schedule is <laughs> a little bit different than most people's, so <laughs> I heard that this might be your nap time for normal. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> because you're out what hours of the night working? In the this streets? time of the year, I usually go out around 10 o'clock, okay. sometimes nine if I wanna play with the kids. Okay. And then I come in around 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then you also do the soup kitchen then? Yeah, I start there at 9.30. Wow. And I'm there until 12.30, 1 o'clock. That's incredible. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the street mission work that you do? It's my job to walk the streets uh, in Midtown, Uptown Harrisburg, okay. um, and just deal with whoever is out there. Originally, it was just to deal with the prostitutes, but I have kind of morphed it into whoever is on the street and needs help. And and do you just sit and talk with them or? Usually I sit and talk with them um, when they're trust. Um, I've taken girls home. Um, if I see a baby left alone on the streets, I hang around until I'm sure mom is back mm. so that nothing happens to it. Um, basically just whatever they need, I, if I can supply it, I try to help. What are some ways that you have gained their trust? Uh, it's basically whatever happens on the street stays on the streets. Okay. If I see a fight or a gun problem, if I see or hear or know of a prostitute, I'm not going to turn her in. They accept me as one of them. What are the ages that you have worked with for the prostitution? My youngest prostitute was eight years old. My oldest prostitute was 76. Hmm. And have you talked to them? Like, do you actually give them resources to get out of their... Oh, yeah. My eight-year-old was prostituting because she wanted to give her dying brother a birthday party. Oh. And her mother was a prostitute, so she knew what it was all about. Although mom was in Muncie and she's living with grandma, grandma said we couldn't afford to give him a party. All we can have is like, I'll make him a cake and that's it. Well, he's dying, he ain't gonna live to see another one. So she wanted to give him a birthday party with clowns and magicians and balloons and stuff that other kids take for granted. Hmm. So she tried her hand at prostitution one night. She snuck out and got herself picked up and. When I saw her, she was getting out of the car and crying and carrying on, and mm. we had a long talk, and I agreed to see to it that her brother got his birthday party if she never did it again. And she's kept her word. And you've stayed in contact with her then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've stayed in contact. We never told Grandma how we met. Mm. 
and uh, she goes to church. She's an honor student in school. Mm. But her brother got his birthday party. My clown friends and some magicians and balloon artists all got together, and that kid probably had more friends in his neighborhood than he ever knew existed, but <laughs> she got her wish. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear the stories, you know, behind why people are, are doing that. You well, know, my 78-year-old prostitute's because her social security check don't stretch. Hmm. And I was told by a couple of pastors in some of the rural areas that they know of some ladies outside their town that go into a bigger city and prostitute when their checks don't stretch. So it's not just something that happens in, in the city itself. Do people help you with this ministry? Uh, as far as help monetarily, yeah, we get some donations. But as far as going out on the streets, yeah, no. no. It's me and Jesus. First of all, there is no one else that I would trust my life with more than him. Mm. And if you're not known, they're not going to talk anyhow. They're going to ignore you or try to take you over. Mm. So. It definitely reminds me of the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story where there was a fourth person in the fire with the three of them, and it was Jesus. And He's great. there every night with me. Yeah. Have you ever been threatened while you were out there on the streets? Oh, yeah, lots of times. I've been threatened by pimps. I've been beat up by a pimp. I've had guns pointed at me. Uh, I've had knives pointed at me. The biggest threat is the one you really don't see. Um, I was helping a girl move one night that had a small baby. She wanted to go to Lancaster. I convinced her to go home. She flagged me down one night and asked me to help her. And so we did what they call a ghetto move. That's where you put everything you own in a trash bag and you run like heck before anybody knows you moved. Oh. So it was like midnight and she's bringing, she had like four garbage bags. She brought them down one at a time and stuck them in the truck. But every time she would see a car headlight, she'd duck behind the car so nobody would see her. And she said, okay, I'm almost ready to go. I got one more thing. Okay, what's that? Go get it. So she came down carrying a three-year-old little girl. Well, I made a little bed type thing in the back of my truck and I said, why are we moving like this? And after a while, she, I said, first of all, does your mom know we're coming? No. Well, I made her call because by the time we got to Lancaster, it was already midnight. I didn't want to wake her mom up and only find out she wasn't going to keep her. Her mom agreed to keep her, uh, but the reason she was moving and getting out of prostitution was because her pimp boyfriend was going to prostitute their three-year-old daughter. Mm. He had found a man who wanted to pay some big bucks to have sex with the kid. And she said, Miss Pat, I ruined my life. I'm not going to ruin hers. I can't know who those guys are. All I can do is hope to get the women away from them before it happens. You also work at a soup kitchen in Harrisburg. Do you ever see any of those women that you've talked to on the streets come into the soup kitchen? Oh yeah, but I don't talk to them there unless they come over and talk to me. Uh, when I told them they're welcome to come up and have lunch, um, I told them nobody will ask any questions. Nobody, we, at, we will feed anybody who comes in the door, gets a hot noon meal. So I said, unless you wanna talk to me or acknowledge that you know me, you can come in and have lunch and just leave. So yeah, there's quite a few of them that come in. How many people do you often have at the soup kitchen? Depends on the time of the month and, and the weather because we have a lot of elderly in the neighborhood. When they first opened the soup kitchen in 88, um, the pastor went around to the local neighbors and told them that we were opening a soup kitchen and that they were welcome to come there and have their noon meal to try to help economize food-wise. Um, so we do get a lot of the elderly from the neighborhood who eat there so they can save money on groceries and pay their taxes or their medicine. So we can have anywhere from 40 to 100. It de just depends. And where does the food come from or where do the donations come from? The donations come from churches and, and places like that that do food drives for us. And we buy a lot of food from the food bank. Okay. Well, I thank you so much for sharing. And as I was thinking of this interview, I just thought that Jesus never said that being a Christian meant that we were only supposed to talk to and minister to those who it was safe to talk to, because if we truly are his hands and feet, then we need to be venturing out into the places that he would have gone if he were here. So I thank you so much for your ministry. Well, thank you, because that's the way I feel. Mm -hmm.
And if you would like to learn more about Pat's Ministries and how you could donate, you can check out my blog at SusquehannaExpress.blogspot.com.